Maybe about a week or so ago, I started watching this TV show called Andor. I don't know if you heard about it. It's part of the Star Wars universe. Um, it's sort of like a mini series, but it's one of those binge watch shows where it's like they release like 12 or 13 episodes at the same time. And it started off kind of slow, but then what happened was I started watching it and it got, it's really, really good. And I found myself getting hooked on this show. And I would just watch the show and every time it would, you know, I, I would watch it, I would just shut out all distractions. I'd turn my phone off, you know, some, I wouldn't even brush my teeth sometime. I would just be watching the show because I wanted to, I didn't want any distractions. And something about those shows, when you watch it, you keep on watching it over and over again. And in your mind, you're like, okay, I know it's three in the morning, I gotta go to bed, I gotta go to bed, but I gotta watch this next episode. Uh, how, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, what, what are some of your favorite shows? What are y'all watching now? Just, just shout it out. Locked up, what'd you say? Pastor Ray said locked up. <laughs> what else? Huh? Chosen. Who said Law and Order? Lord of the Rings. What about House of Dragon? Who watched House of Dragon? House of Dragon. Game of Thrones? What about All American? Y'all watch All American? Right? What about Rick and Morty? Y'all watch Rick and Morty? <laughs> what about, um, huh? Yellowstone. Yellowstone is a good show. Yellowstone is real good. What about that, that, what about that Jeffrey Dahmer miniseries on Netflix? Boo. Oh, who got it? He raised his hand. <laughs> so, one thing about those shows when it's time for you to watch your show, your favorite show, you cut out all distractions. You turn your phone off. If you marry, you tell your wife or your husband, don't talk to me for a couple of hours. Right? If you got kids, if you got kids, you'd be like, kids, look, y'all need to go somewhere for about three or four days. I'm going to be in my room watching my show. Right? And if they're hungry, and if they're hungry, you just get a box of cereal and just throw it in the room, and then you go in there and watch, and watch your show, right? Right? Because that's your show. So one thing about that is we focus on what we want to focus on. Let's just keep it real. We focus on what we want to focus on. We make time for what we want to make time for. Of all the stuff that God has given us, Everything belongs to God that, that, that he's given to us. Everything that we have. Everything that he, we have, we can get it back. So if you have food, let's say you waste food or give food away or just you use food, you can get more food. Clothes. If you spend, you know, if you lose clothes or whatever happens, you give clothes away, you can get more clothes back. Any type of material thing, you can get that back. Energy, even energy. You can spend a lot of energy working on something. You can get that back. Even money. Even money. You can waste money. Give money away. Lose money. Lose money on an investment, whatever. But you can get that back. But there's one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing, one thing that God has given to each and every one of us that cannot be replaced. And that's time. Time. Everybody say time. Time. T-I-M-E. -E. We cannot get time back. Now, we can use it. We can re redeem the time. We can use it to the best of our ability, but we can't get it back. So think about all those hours. It's easy. It's easy to spend hours watching your favorite show. And I just want to say this. Just watching, watching your favorite TV show is not bad. It's not evil. Okay, but keep it in perspective, though. Don't let it come between your relationship between you and God or between you and your family. It's entertainment. I get it. But think of all the time that we spend watching those shows. So we're in this series called First Things First. The, 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 the world is competing for our thoughts, our money, our time, our mind. And we have to choose what we do with those resources. It's, it's up to us. We have to choose it. It's not automatic. 
God's not going to make you do it. But first things first, we have to give to God first. Our money, our time, our resource, whatever it is, God comes first in everything. Because he put us first. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He was thinking about you. He was thinking about us. He put us first, so we have to put him first. So God has given us a certain amount of time, and we have to use it the right way. And he wants to teach us how to use our time. It's not automatic. It's not natural. We have to learn how to do it. So I titled this conversation we're going to have, Choose to Use Your Time Wisely. Choose to use your time wisely. Even if you never hear the rest of the message, just the title alone will be able to minister to you. Choose to use your time, not just any way, but wisely. The huge golden sun was in the sky. A blue sky, puffy white clouds were floating across it. It was hot and dry. And there was a group of men that were walking along a a rocky road. And every time that their feet would slam down on the dust in their sandals, you would see all kinds of dust and particles fly up from the ground. There were bugs. There were flies. You could hear the crickets. It was hot. It was dry. And there was a group of men that was walking along this rocky road. And the leader of that group of men was a young rabbi. He was a young rabbi, and he was born in a small village. And he had some other young men that were following him because he was training them. And they had just ministered to thousands, thousands of people at the town they were in before. They were hungry. They were tired. They were thirsty. Even to the point where the corners of their mouths started to dry up. And they were on their way to Jerusalem, and that was about a two to three mile walk away. But according to their custom, they had to stop traveling at a certain time of day, and it was getting late. So the leader, the young rabbi who was leading that group, knew that they needed rest, so he made a decision. He made a decision to stop at a small village called Bethany. And there in that village called Bethany, there was an old friend that he had. And this old friend was named Martha. And Martha had a sister. Martha had a sister named Mary. And Mary and Martha, they had a brother. Now, little did they know that later on, this brother would get sick. And they probably thought, you know, it was just a short sickness, a small thing that he would get over. But he didn't. It got worse. He became deathly ill. And that brother died. And they also didn't know that that same rabbi who was about to stop at their house would later come back to that same village of Bethany and raise their brother from the dead. that same rabbi would come and raise their brother from the dead after he had been dead in the tomb for four days. So that young rabbi's name was Jesus of Nazareth. And so now we're going to see what happened when Jesus and his disciples stopped at Martha and Mary's house on their way to Jerusalem. So right now, you know, uh, this coming week, Thanksgiving is coming, and right now we're in the middle of the hustle and bustle of the holiday season. Black Friday sales is going on. You're getting all kinds of TV commercials telling you to spend money on this and go here and buy this and get this. And if you don't get that, then you're not this. And if you don't spend time over here, then you're not going to be doing that. A lot of distractions on our time, on our money, on our thoughts. But God wants to teach us how, to choose, how, to, how do we can choose to use our time wisely. So as we go into the scripture, we have to catch up. We have to catch up to where they are right now. And maybe 
just maybe you'll learn how to choose to use your time wisely. So let's jump in. Everybody say, Holy Ghost Time Machine. Holy Ghost Time Machine. Boom. We're there right now. We're in that house. Jesus knocks on the door. Martha opens the door. She's busy. I'm sure she has an apron on. She's busy. She's getting things together, cooking, getting stuff ready. Let's see what happens. We're coming from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. And the word of the Lord reads. It says, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Now, we don't know if she was married or not. Maybe she might have been in the past. I don't know, but it doesn't say. But it does say that it was her house. Verse 39 says, and she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Now, a lot of times when you hear people talk about this particular story, they always kind of paint Martha as the villain. Like she was the one that had all the problems and she was all jacked up. And then Mary was the one that was doing right and sitting at Jesus' feet. But even though parts of that may be true, I just want to just show you that in the scripture, there could be a possibility that they could do both. Because the Bible says, who also sat at Jesus' feet. That means that I'm sure Mary was serving or had served at one point. But at that time, she chose to sit at Jesus' feet. Are you with me so far? And what was she doing at Jesus' feet? Hearing his word, listening to his word. Verse 40, it says, But Martha was distracted with much serving. Everybody say distracted. They, she was distracted with much serving. And she approached him. Now, Martha was probably so frustrated and so distracted. Now, Jesus was there in their house. The Lamb of God, God in the flesh, was there in their house with all his disciples. And she saw her sister Mary there listening. But Martha was so distracted with her serving I could just imagine her getting so angry and so mad, like I'm tired of doing all this cooking, I'm tired of doing all this preparation, nobody's here to help me. So she was so frustrated and so distracted that she stopped what she was doing. She stopped what she was doing and approached Jesus. And she says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? She tried to put Jesus on the guilt trip. <laughs> Jesus, can't you see I'm, I'm doing all this by myself? Don't you care about me? Of course Jesus cares. He's Jesus. He's God in the flesh. Of course he cares. But she tried to jam him up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and be, and this, here's a public service announcement too. Just be careful. Not everybody, because sometimes, sometimes people will try to do that. Sometimes people will try to get to pull you in into their stuff. You know what I'm saying? And to distract you from what you got to do, if you know what I'm saying. If you know what I'm saying. So, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me alone to serve? Then she, te then she, she tells Jesus what to do. She says, therefore, like she got an attitude, Therefore, tell her to help me. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> now, if this was a whole, if this was another, another universe and another sermon, um, Jesus probably would have looked at her and was like, oh, you talking to me? You want me to do what? Don't you? Oh, yeah, hold up. Don't, don't you know I could vaporize this whole universe in a second? <laughs> no, nah, but he didn't say that. He didn't say that. <laughs> right, because we'd be, we'd be all jacked up if that happened. It says, therefore, tell her to help me. Now, Martha was frustrated. 
I'm sure she was frustrated. I'm sure she was angry. I'm sure she was so flustered because she was doing all that stuff by herself. And it's interesting, right, because sometimes, like even in, sometimes even in relationships, right, this is just another free nugget public service announcement. Sometimes in relationships, like when, you, when you're frustrated, I've done this before too, I'll pray to God to do something to somebody else. I'll put that on me. No, I, I'm sure nobody else in here has done that. I'm sure nobody else has done that. I'm just going to put that on me. Sometimes I'll be like, God, show them what I'm going through. God, tell them what I'm dealing with. And God is like, no, I'm not, I'm going to deal with them. I'm talking, I'm, I'm dealing with you. What you going to do? You got to tighten up. So understand, Martha tried to do the same thing. Tell her to help me. And now Jesus is about to tell Martha what's going on. <laughs> But wait, there's more. Now, I just want to say this. Martha did nothing wrong, meaning her serving. It wasn't that she was doing the serving was the problem. It was just her heart. Her heart posture was off. Her attitude was off. She wasn't doing it with love. She was bitter. She was angry. She was doing it because she was trying to impress with works. A lot of times we do stuff because we think that's going to get us points. Right? No, that's not always the case. Not, a, not the case at all. She was worried. She was distracted away from Jesus. She was distracted away from Jesus with a good thing. Serving was good. There were people there. It was her house. That was what she was supposed to do. So a lot of times, a good thing may not be a God thing. I'm going to say it again. A good thing may not be a God thing. A lot of things we can do can be busy, and it's good in and of itself, but is it really inspired by God? Or are we just doing it on our own because we have, you know, something that we're trying to do or hide from or whatever? We don't know. But the point is, the whole point of this word coming forth, even for me too, is so we can check our hearts. What is the motive of why we do what we do? And that's the key. And I just want to say this also. Don't let anyone else's crisis become your emergency. Now, I'm not, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that you don't help people. I'm not saying that you don't care about what people are going through. That's what we're here for, to serve, to help. I get that. But don't just be discerning. Be wise. Don't get pulled in to something when it's someone else's stuff going on and it's going to pull you away from your relationship with Jesus. Amen. That, that deserves a clap. I just want to say this disclaimer. When I say amen, that doesn't mean stop clapping or be quiet. I'm just agreeing. So when I say, okay, well, if I say something and you feel like clapping, just obey God and just clap. Enjoy that. We're, we're free here. We family here. So I'm not saying that you don't not to help people, but be careful because some people will try to pull you in and make what they're dealing with like the number one most important thing in the world that you got to shop everything and do for. And that's what Martha tried to do with Mary. Now, Mary was just chilling. So Jesus is about to talk to Martha. Verse 41 says, and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, said her name twice. You are worried and troubled about many things. Everybody say many things. Many things. things. He could see right through her. He knew her. He loved her. He knew what she was dealing with. He looked right through her and said, Martha, Martha. He looked at her with those eyes of love and just burned right through her soul and looked at her and asked her, You got any more of them chicken wings left? (laughs) No, no, Jesus didn't say that. (laughs) Jesus, don't you care? (laughs) You see all the stress I'm going through, are you going to ask me about some chicken wings? Jesus didn't say that. But what he did say was, he said, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Now, maybe it might have been 
Maybe it might have been the pain of her feeling rejected because she wasn't married. Maybe she was married in the past. Who knows? We don't, we don't know. Maybe that could have been it. Maybe she was frustrated because she had to kind of like take care of her sister and her brother. And maybe the pain might have come from her own heart. Because a lot of times we, we, get, we get busy and we do stuff and we stay busy because we don't want to get quiet with God. Because we don't want to face ourselves. Because we're afraid of our hearts and us. So we try to keep ourselves surrounded by a lot of people all the time and stay busy all the time. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. I mean, there's a time for everything. But God wants us to deal with the stuff that's in our heart. Now, maybe that might have been the issue with, with Martha. We don't know. But whatever it is, Jesus addresses it. And he says, one thing is needed in verse 42. He says, one thing is needed. Everybody say, one thing. One thing, one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. Everybody say, that good part. That good part. Mary has chosen that good part. It wasn't automatic. We have a choice. We have to choose. God has given all of us free will. He's not going to make us do anything. You got to choose to do it because you want to. Jesus says, Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Mary's good part was her simple chosen devotion to Jesus, loving him by listening to his word. You ever seen... You ever been on, on, on Facebook or on, on Instagram or social media and somebody put up a post and it says something real heavy and it's real powerful and you agree with that thing, right? And you see somebody put a comment and it says that part. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That part. That part. Everybody say that part. that part. That means that you co-sign on that thing. That means that you know like, okay, yeah, that part right there. That part right there. That part. So Jesus did a little remix. So instead of saying that part, he said, Mary has chosen that good part. That good part is when we choose God, is when we choose Jesus. That good part is when we choose Jesus. So if you have a choice to make and you choose Jesus, that's what? That good part. So if you believe in God for your healing, you, you sick in your body. You, I mean, I'm talking about you sick, sick. And you feeling pain in your body. And you standing on that promise that God is going to heal your body. And people may be laughing at you saying, man, you still believe in God for you to get healed? You say, you know what? I believe God. That means that you choose that good part. Amen. You choose that good part. There may be some people in your family right now. You may have kids, sons and daughters, nieces and nephews, whoever, father, mother. They may not even be saved. They may be in the street, wilding out, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, drug addicted, whatever. But you're believing God that they're going to be saved. Hold on to that promise. Hold on to that promise. So when people mock you and joke you and say, man, you still believe in God that, you, that your daughter going to be saved or your son is going to be saved? You're going to be like, yeah, I believe God because I've chosen what? That good part. That good part. You might, you might have gotten paid on your job. And you got bills stacked up to here. And you know in your heart you should give your tithe and your offering to God because you trust him. But it's a, it's, it's a fight. It's tension because you don't know what to choose. When you choose to give generously because it belongs to God anyway. First things first, when you choose to give that tithe and offering to God and trust him, you're choosing that good part. That's that good part. You have to choose that good part. You know when you're watching your favorite show, right? You're watching your favorite show and you know you got to pee real bad, but you can't get up. Because why? That show is at what? That good part. So you're not going to get up. You know what I'm saying? You got to choose it. So listen, 
Whatever you believe in God for, you choose to believe that word. You choose to believe that promise, no matter what anyone says, because that's that good part. Jesus said Mary has chosen that good part. And guess what? He said it will not be taken away from her. It won't be taken away from her. It won't be taken away from you when you choose that good part. Because you're choosing God. When he sees that you, can cho- that you chose him, he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. Parents, raise your hand if you're a parent, if you're a parent in here. Parents, when, your kid, when you give your kids a choice to make and they choose the right thing, don't you get excited? Yeah. Don't that make you feel good? Yeah. What does that make you want to do to your kids? Bless them. Do something good for them. So if you feel like that as a regular human parent, how much more does God feel like that when we choose him? Right? When we choose what? That good part. That good part. Listen, one thing, if you don't remember anything else I say here today, one thing. Spending time with Jesus is that good part. Spending time with Jesus is that good part. If you have a choice, if you want to go out um, to the mall and go shopping, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but if you feel in your heart that, you know what, I really feel the need to kind of just pray and read and just kind of spend time with God, that's that good part. Exactly. That's that good part. You choose. Yeah, you could go, and there's nothing wrong with that, but now... At this time, I'm choosing to spend time with God. That's that good part. Now, listen, there's a time to work and a time to rest. So all of us as believers should be Martha and Mary at some point, not either or. But it's about the timing. That's why we have to go and and be in communication with God and ask him, God, what do you want me to do now? What do you want me to do in this situation? Where do you want me to go? You have to choose to use your time wisely. Listen, if you're frustrated, if you're angry, if you're bitter, if you are just, if you have a lot of unforgiveness, if you can't, if, if, you, if you're beating yourself up over mistakes that you made years ago, and it seems like you don't have any joy or any peace in your mind, in your heart, give that to Jesus. Because he cares for you. The Bible says, cast all of your care on him. All of it, not some of it. All of it on him because he cares for you. He loves you. He died for you. Give it to him. Parents, you don't want to see your kids burdened down and stressed out and struggling. You love them. You want to see them smiling and happy and full of joy. That's what God wants to do with us. But he can't make you do it. We got to cast on it. We got to choose to do that. We got to choose that good part. Listen, Jesus was in a square. This was in the book of Matthew. He had just finished teaching and ministering to thousands of people. And there were some cities there that he was talking about that were going to be suffering in the judgment because there were some cities that even he couldn't do a lot of works in because of their unbelief. Jesus himself couldn't do mighty works there because of the people's unbelief. And it was like tons of people in this open square and he gave an open invitation. And in the Bible, it talks about it, it, it right after he says this, it's an exclamation mark which means he didn't just say it quietly. He yelled it out for everybody to hear. And this is going out for all of us. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, and the word of the Lord reads. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden. That all means what? All. All. Not some. That doesn't just mean black people come to him. That doesn't just mean white people come to him. That doesn't just mean Hispanics or Mexican come to him or Asian. That doesn't just mean rich people or poor people. 
It means all, everybody. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, weighted down, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. That's what Mary was doing because she chose that what? That good part. She was learning. And that opportunity is available for all of us. Reading the word, spending time in prayer, listening for God. He says, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your soul. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's an open invitation. So if that's you right now and you're feeling weighted down and heavy, it might be because of your own sin. Just give it to Jesus. Confess it. He already knows. It might be some unforgiveness. It might be something that happened to you when you was a child. Give it to him. Be free. Be free. So Jesus was there and he was talking to his disciples. They had just finished eating and I'm sure the kitchen was piled up with dishes. So at this time, I'm sure Martha was at his feet also. And so Jesus was there. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. God in the flesh. Jesus, that young rabbi who would later raise their brother from the dead, was in their house right now at that time. That same Jesus is here at Rise Church right now. That same Jesus is here right now. He's not here physically, but he's here in the person of the Holy Spirit. And he already knows what you're going through. He just wants you to give it to him. Now, some of you in here may identify with Martha. Your love language might be acts of service. You love serving, you love helping, you love being busy with your hands, and that's awesome. But you might be doing all that without a focus on Jesus. You might be doing it in your own strength. So my advice to you is come to Jesus. Release everything to him. Give it to him. And if that's you, if you identify with Martha and you're in here right now, just say this simple prayer after me and believe it in your heart. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me for trying to do everything myself and not depending on you. Forgive me for not spending time with you. God, help me to choose to spend time with you. And God, I thank you for doing a new thing in me. In Jesus' name. Now, some of you in here may identify with Mary. You have no problem sitting at Jesus' feet and hearing his word. And you have no problem serving as well but you might have drifted off a little bit. That fire might not be as bright and raging as it was when you first got saved. Jesus wants you to come back because he wants to use you to be an answer to somebody's prayer. And if that's you, if that's you, just say the simple prayer after me and believe it. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, forgive me for drifting Bring me back to my first love. Stir up, stir up in me a hunger and a thirst for your word, to spend time with you. And God, I thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Now, there may be some of you in here that doesn't even identify with Martha or Mary. You may not even be a believer in Jesus Christ at all. You're following your own rules, doing your own thing but you're here for a reason. And my advice to you is come to Jesus. Be born again. 
receive the salvation and the everlasting life that's already been provided for you. But it's your choice. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you. 2,000 years ago, he died for you. He saw you. He knew you from your mother's womb. God has a purpose and a plan for you. And if that's you, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to stand up or anything. If that's you and you want to be saved, you want to be born again, just say the simple prayer and believe it. Say, God, forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died for me and that you raised him up on the third day. And with this confession, I believe in my heart that I'm saved. I thank you for an abundant life. I thank you for everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, listen, God is doing some amazing things. Amen. Let's give it up for those who will just be born again. Awesome. God is doing some amazing things here at this church in Abilene with this movement. He's doing amazing things all over the world, and he wants you to be part of it. He wants us to be part of it. But we have, we have to choose. We have to choose that good part. And one thing, spending time with Jesus is that good part. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Thank you for bringing us back to you, God. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in our lives. Lord, bless us today. Protect everybody as they're driving. And God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing your word to pass in our lives. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. We are excited about what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us here at Rise Church Online. We hope today's message was impactful. Listen, we want to stay connected with you. So by clicking on the link below, you can find out how to do that. Also, by clicking on that giving link, you can help us continue to advance the kingdom of God through discipleship and outreach. Please subscribe to our channel for all new content. We'll see you next week. Thank you and God bless.